a review of Gold West from Tasty Minstrel Games. All right. First, in an uh, effort to be as transparent as possible, I did receive a review copy of Gold West from TMG at Origins 2019. No other compensation was provided. Now, Gold West was designed by J. Alex Cavern, or Kevern, I'm not sure about that, I apologize, and features art by Adam P. McCliver. It was published in 2015 by Tasty Minstrel Games, plays two to four players in under 60 minutes. See what you get when you pick up a copy of Gold West. Be sure to check out our unboxing video over on YouTube. You'll find a link to that in the show notes. Now, I'm not going to go through everything you get here. If you want that, you can see it on the podcast or you can watch our unboxing video. But I do want to comment on a couple things in regard to component quality in Gold West. Uh, for one, the rule book's great. Nice, big, large text, black font, light background, tons of examples. This is literally one of the better rule books I've seen and read in the last year or so. Now, the player boards, though, are the opposite as cool. They are disappointingly thin. Like, literally Terraforming Mars level of thin player boards. If you played Terraforming Mars, you know what I'm talking about. These are not boards. These are thick card. And this is another game where you're going to put a lot of stuff on these boards. And if some of that stuff, especially your resources and your bins, gets bumped, that could ruin the game. Now, interestingly, the board and the rest of the tokens and the punch boards are the exact opposite. This game has some of the thickest cardboard I have ever seen in a game before. It's really impressive. The chips used, like the, the land tiles, are very easy to pick up and flip over and manipulate, which is a huge bonus. So how do we use this thick cardboard? How do you play Gold West? All right, so to start off, you have to build the board. Now, this is built with a frame and a bunch of hex-based tiles that show landscape with a river kind of in the middle. On that map are a bunch of four different terrain types, and you're going to put a token on top of each of one face down and then flip up the ones next to the river because those are the ones you're able to use at the beginning. There's eight investment cards and some random endgame scoring tiles that are put out before play, and then some bonus scoring tokens are placed on the main board. Now, each player takes a player board. These are all the same. It has a spot to hold all your settlement and camp markers and a place to hold your influence tokens, and then you're going to put a miner which is a little meeple that represents you on the scoring track, and a wagon on each of three shipping tracks. In a really neat way to determine first player, you shuffle up the 100-point tokens for if you lap the board, and then flip them over, and that determines who's first, and then redistribute the other one so you're going to play in a clockwise order. Those tokens also give you your starting resources. Those get put on these resource bins on a person person's player board. Hopefully you so the game does take a bit of time to set up with all the components, but it's not onerous, and the variety of shapes and sizes is helpful mm -hmm. in that. Uh, now, the player colors are compatible with color blindness. I found an online test that I can now do, so if I've got a good picture of all the color components, I can nice. run through eight different types of color blindness wow. to see if uh, they are still all differenti differentiable during that. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, they even went a step further so that the metals are actual different shaped cylinders, so they each have different sides. So even if you couldn't tell the colors apart, they're tactically different, which is cool. Tactilely, not tactically. They, they feel different. All right, Um. so when playing the actual game, so what you're going to do on your turn is you've got four bins on your player board that are going to have resources in them. You're going to take everything out of one of the bins, and then, like playing Mancala, you're going to drop off one of the things in your hand in each other bin going up until you get to the top. Then whatever you have left in your hand is what determines what actions you can take, which is a very neat mechanic. Now, these actions include using metals. Uh, the metals are used to fill, fulfill investment orders, place influence tokens on Boomtown, which is an endgame scoring part of the board, or move up on the shipping tracks, and there's three different shipping tracks. Now, the investment cards let you trade your metal for points or other things. Boomtown is all endgame scoring. And then the sh three shipping tracks is one for copper, silver, and gold. And it's basically one of those things where you slide up on the track and you're going to get points when you hit certain milestones on it or certain thresholds. Now, after you spend all your medals, you have to expand your territory. This is mandatory. You're going to do this by spending wood and or brick. If you only have one of those, if you only have wood or brick, you're going to build a camp, which is represented by a little triangle. It's cute. If you have both wood and brick, you're going to build a settlement, which is a, a camp on top of a little wooden disc. If you got neither, though, you still have to expand by looting a claim off the board. So when building a camp or settlement, what you're going to do is take one of those resource tiles that are on the board and replace it with your playing piece. You're then going to get the resources that are on the token, which you then have to put in one of your supply bins. 
Now, this is interesting because the decision of what bin to put your stuff in is a big part of the game because of that Mancala mechanic. And you're going to get points for putting stuff in the later bins, the ones you're not going to be able to pull out of right away. It's only a small amount of points. And the last thing you're going to do is you're going to place the tile you took and put it on your player board under the appropriate terrain type. There's four different ones. If you place the settlement, you actually get to skip a spot. And these are used for an end game area control scoring, area majority scoring. Now, looting happens if you couldn't build a settlement or a camp. And what you do is you're still going to pick a tile. You're still going to get the resources, but you don't get to put it on your board. So you don't get to get that scoring. Plus, your camp piece is placed on the wanted poster. And at the end of the game, the players who are most wanted and second most wanted are going to lose some points. Now, this game is really all about the forward thinking. There's a good number of things to recall. I bet mm. most listeners have already forgotten about half of what Moji said about what resources does what. Yeah, thankfully, there's a pretty good summary at the bottom. Basically, metals get you points, and, and wood and stone let you expand out. Now, play just keeps going until you placed all of your camp tokens, after which each player gets one more turn to spend their metals. Now, endgame scoring includes all kinds of things. There's majority awards for each of the four terrain types, bonus points for your influence tokens on Boomtown, points for each player's largest contiguous chain of camps and settlements, and so on. Uh, there's a lot of little end game scoring. Now the player at the most points at the end of the game wins. So, all right, nice I think simple, we're at right? everyone. Uh, everyone should be able to get it to their, to their table on their own first try, right? No need for extreme play on this. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know if we have played extreme in in, in Gold West. I, I, if we have, I haven't noticed it. Yeah. So, this was an interesting one. I didn't know what to expect with Gold West. This was not a game I was hyped to try. This isn't anything I saw sought out it was a matter of going to the tasty mints for booth at origins and them offering me a review copy and going i don't own that why not um the other thing too is like i know i heard nothing about this game like this is not a new game i think it was 2014 i said i don't feel like scrolling up skype will die before i get there um i hadn't heard much about this game which is a shame because i think this is a very solid game um i like heavier games in general and especially heavier games that play quickly now i wouldn't call this heavy it's a 2.46 on Board Game Geek, but it's heavier than most games that play under an hour. To me, it hits a sweet spot of, uh, it's thinky, it's fun, I, I'm being rewarded for my own player skill, it's not overly random, and I can play it in a short time slot. And not many games hit that that sweet spot to me. To me, that's a, it's a great sweet spot. Like, this is up there for me with Bruges, Strasbourg, and Hansa Teutonica. For those one-hour thinky fillers, I think we could probably call them, because you're getting that experience of playing a, a heavier economic game, but in that short time frame. Yeah, no, it fits into an interesting spot where there are a lot of moving parts and forward thinking and planning, but once you get over that initial hump of, of figuring out what all the mm -hmm. different things you can do, it's really not difficult to play. Yeah, and I have played this literally at all player counts. Uh, I played it two, three, and four, and they play it plays just as well. Like like there, I I don't even think there's an optimal. I think it's just as good playing two player, three player, and four. And you don't find that often where a two player game and four player like the two extremes of the player counts are equally fun. Now I enjoy this game a lot. Like I, I it's not my favorite game, but I like it a lot. Deanna loves it. She is a huge fan of this game. Every time she plays, she's like, "Oh, that's good. We need to play some more." Now we have taught. A couple of gamers who didn't enjoy it as much as us. So this did happen. And I think the reason for that is mostly tied to the fact that this is an abstract Euro. Like you hear the old West and you think cowboys and shootouts and saloons and poker. And this doesn't really feel old West. You don't feel like a miner. You don't get any like gold rush mindset. It's all very mechanical. Interestingly, I didn't mind the theme. Now, I may just be getting more used to Euros and their, their theme paint. Um, yeah. But uh, I did really enjoy the Mancala aspect, and it forced a level of planning that I think I sometimes let slide in games, right. whereas this really enforces that forward thinking. Because mm -hmm. if you try to just throw something down, you're done. There's no yeah. point in playing at all. Uh, for me, it was a fun game. It's well thought out. I think it's well designed. Again, it's yes, there is theme paint on a Euro, but yep. I, I got it. You know, I, yep. I it worked. Um, and if you put it in front of me, I'd play it again. But for some reason, there's something about the game where I wouldn't actually play it again. Right? Huh? I, I absolutely, Fair. you know, hey, you want to play Gold West? Sure. But I would never say, hey, do you want to play Gold West? Yeah. 
Uh, and I gotta I, say, I think that a lot of that may be what lines up with your lack of hearing about it. Whereas you know, it's a good game, but it hasn't connected with everyone. And to be honest, I've gotten that from quite a few people. I, this is one of those games where I've heard a lot of people say, I would happily play that again, but I wouldn't go out and buy it. Which, which is disappointing, because I personally really dig it. I think it does something cool and new with Mancala. Every other Mancala game I played does a full circle, right? Like you just keep going around in some way. Yep. This has an end, which is neat. And I really love how quick it is for a thinky filler. For me, that's a sweet spot. But you know what? Some players are going to be turned off either by the dry mechanics or the fact that it does require that extra level of thinking. And especially if they want a quick game, this does not fit our quick and easy game thing we were talking about last week. In my opinion, if you're looking for a game that gives you the feeling of being on the frontier in the Old West, this isn't it. You're, you're not, the vibe's not there. There's, to be honest, this could have been anything. We could have been terraforming Mars easily. Just give it a red coat of paint, it'd be all good. But if you like abstract strategy games that are quick to learn, offer a ton of replayability, and really dig that, that having to plan ahead, having to have forward thinking, getting rewarded for planning ahead, I think it's worth checking out Gold West, but I honestly do have to say try before you buy. I've had far too many people tell me, I dig it, I'd play it again, it was fun, but I wouldn't want to spend the money on it. So fair enough. For anyone local, I've got a copy. If you want to play mine, I'm not going to be getting rid of it. Well, for a more in-depth look at Gold West, check out Mo's written review over at tabletopbellhop.com. Just choose.